In this video, I'm going to be sharing my theories on what I think the story of Help Wanted 2 is and how it's foreshadowing the earliest part of the FNAF timeline. Let's start with where are we? Once you enter the main hub area, it's pretty obvious that we're in the FNAF 6 pizzeria that we saw in Security Breach. But this time, we're seeing it in a much cleaner and newer state. And that's because halfway through the game, we learn that we've been wearing the Vanny mask this whole time. The pizzeria in reality looks a lot closer to how we find it in Security Breach. For some reason, the Vanny Vanny Mask is able to show us what the pizzeria looked like in the past, and this is actually not the first time we've seen this happen. There's one part of Ruin that's always stuck out to me. In Ruin, when you go up to the secret daycare room without the Vanny Mask on, it looks completely destroyed. But once you put the Vanny Mask on, it looks brand new. Not only that, it looks even better than it did when we saw it in Security Breach. The mask is able to show us how certain places used to look, which is why the FNAF 6 pizzeria looks brand new when we have the Vanny mask on. So we know where we are, but what about when we are? Well, in the pizzeria, we can see the charging station that Freddy uses right before we go down to find Burn Trap in Security Breach. But now, it's completely destroyed, insinuating that this game takes place after Security Breach. Also, there's the fact that we see the shattered Glamrock animatronics in the game, which only can appear if it takes place after Security Breach. So we know this game takes place after Security Breach, but the more interesting question is, does this game take place before or after Ruin? Well, this is actually pretty well laid out for us in the Roxy Salon minigame. In the minigame, we're told to do Roxy's makeup, but after not being satisfied, she asks us to give her a mask. This mask is the same one we see her wearing in Ruin. This explains why Roxy looks so different in Ruin compared to Security Breach. And not only that, where Roxy is in this minigame is right where we find her in Ruin, sitting at that exact vanity trying to figure out how to find Gregory. I think it's pretty safe to say that this game takes place after Security Breach, but before for ruin. So now for some bigger questions. Who are we, and why are we here? Several times throughout the game, we hear little details about our character. Carney in Phazerblast says that we look like we have kids, indicating that we're an adult. Now, you look like you got kids. Win a prize for the little one! <gasps> an adult! We're an adult! Also, when we unlock the Faz Wrench, Mystic Hippo tells us that it should look familiar to us. <laughs> Another thing that we're told looks familiar is the secret Bonnie mask you can unlock in Princess Quest. If you know anything about the lore from Ruin, you know that we were introduced to a character that fits all of these descriptions. A character who is an adult, who knows what a Faz Wrench is, and who loves Bonnie. And that's Cassie's dad. We actually learned a lot about Cassie's dad in Ruin. We learned that he was a Fazbear engineer that worked at the Pizzaplex. We learned that he never told Cassie why Glamrock Bonnie was decommissioned. We learned that his favorite character was Bonnie. But most importantly, we learned that he disappeared. We know he disappeared because Cassie always talks about her dad in the past tense. My dad used to collect these. Bonnie was my dad's favorite. Cassie also says, what happened to you when we collect the Bonnie mask in Ruin? Which now with the context of Help Wanted 2, we know is related to her dad. But the biggest piece of evidence for her dad going missing is in the Glamrock Salon. Whenever Cassie puts on the Vanny mask in Ruin, she sees glimpses of things and moments from her past. Cassie's favorite character is Roxy, so when she puts on the mask, the Monty vending machine turns into a Roxy vending machine. Cassie doesn't like that Monty replaced Bonnie, so when she sees Monty on stage, she sees him with red X's over his eyes. But the biggest examples of this happening is in the Glamrock Salon. When Cassie puts on the mask, she sees her own memories through the cardboard cutouts. She sees herself hanging out with Roxy, doing her makeup with Roxy. She sees Gregory being by her side when she's upset, and she sees him going missing. But the most important memory is the last one we see in this area. It's a white sticky note written by her dad that says, Gone for a while. Money for food on counter, emergency contacts on fridge. This is Cassie's point of view of her dad going missing. This is the final thing she heard from him. He left, and she has no idea why. But in Help Wanted 2, we learn why. In Help Wanted 2, we see where Cassie's dad ran off to. This was so important to him that he was willing to leave his kid, quote, for a while to get it done. And it's revealed halfway through the game what his goal was, to beat the final Princess Quest game. Over a year ago now, I posted a theory called I Solved FNAF Security Breach, where I told you about a string of duffel bag messages relating to an employee who was obsessed with beating all of the Princess Quest arcade machines. And in his quest to, quote, save the princess, he got fired. With the last thing he said being, they are working together. The arcade
arcades. They are hiding something. The glitches. Glitch them all at the same time. Then the princess will recognize me. She's testing me. I am not yet worthy. The others are protecting it. Let me stay. I'm so close. Just one more night. Please, I can save the princess. And now that we have more information, I believe that this was Cassie's dad. One of the reasons why I believe this is because Cassie's dad says, The glitches. Glitch them all at the same time. Then the princess will recognize me. She's testing me. I am not yet worthy. And once we get to unlock the room with Princess Quest 4, Mystic Hippo says, you are ready. And when you beat the 2D version of Princess Quest 4, the princess finally recognizes us, just like how Cassie's dad said she would. At the beginning of Princess Quest 4, we are told, you are one and you remain. This is him congratulating the princess for defeating Glitchtrap in Princess Quest 3. But then he says, what is left that is hidden? Go to next room. This is implying, at least to me, that Princess Quest Quest 3 didn't fully get rid of Glitchtrap, and that a piece of him still remains and is hidden. In the game, there's two endings that you can get, the good ending and the bad ending. To get the bad ending, you have to collect all of the Transformer toys. Once you collect all of them, the final piece of Glitchtrap wins. Glitchtrap then does to Cassie's dad what he did to Vanessa in Help Wanted 1. In Help Wanted 1, when Glitchtrap transfers his consciousness into Vanessa, she turns into Freddy on stage and sees from his point of view. In Help Wanted 2, when Glitchtrap Glitchtrap transfers his consciousness into Cassie's dad, he turns into the mask bot and sees from its point of view. In the bad ending, Cassie's dad is forced to watch his daughter fall into the same trap he did, which is devastating. But there is another ending, the good ending. Throughout the game, we're told to collect two groups of things, the Transformer toys and the plushies with the masks on them. The thing these have in common is both of them are versions of the victims of William Afton. The Transformers and the plushies feature the five missing children and the puppet. It's revealed in the achievements for the game that the plushies are referred to as memories. The achievement is called Remember Jeremy, featuring a picture of the Bonnie plushie, referencing how the missing child who possesses Bonnie was named Jeremy. These objects that we collect are the pieces of William Afton's identity that form Glitchtrap. In the bad ending, we have to combine all of them to help Glitchtrap win, but in the good ending, we have to use them to defeat Glitchtrap. At the end of Princess Quest 4, we're met with six graves, with a plushie assigned to each grave. This is obviously symbolizing the graves of the missing children and Charlie. In order to get the secret Bonnie mask, you need to light the graves in a specific order. Upon first glance, I thought this was the new order of the kids' deaths, since you need to light Chica's grave first, and in Ultimate Custom Night, Chica says that she was the first and that she's seen everything. But if this is the new order of deaths, that would make Charlie the last kid to die, which wouldn't make much sense. Because of the Silver Eyes trilogy, we've all assumed that Charlie dies in 1983, and the missing children get killed in 1985. Charlie possessing the puppet was also already around when the missing kids got killed in the Give Gifts Give Life minigame. I don't think this is the order of deaths, I think this is the order of the kids' souls being put to rest. This makes much more sense since we know that the puppet and Golden Freddy stuck around in Ultimate Custom Night, after the main kids' souls moved on. And in the Fazbear Frights books, the puppet's soul moved on after Golden Freddy's, which would make sense with the order. Not only does this make the order make more sense, it makes sense why Glitchtrap is defeated in this ending. Instead of gathering all of the missing kids and putting them together, we light all of their graves in the order they moved on, letting those memories be forgotten and letting Glitchtrap be no more. One thing that I didn't expect to see in the game is something called the Fall Fest. We first heard of the Fall Fest in the Curse of Dreadbear DLC in 2019, with the banner in the hub saying Fall Fest of 83. What we all thought was just a one-off Halloween DLC is turning out to be a giant piece of the story of FNAF. In Help Wanted 2, we got mini games that were in the Sister Location Bunker, the Pizza Plex, but also a fair amount that take place at this Fall Fest. The Carousel level is one of them. The other level that takes place at the Fall Fest is Fazer Blast, where we get introduced to a new but old character named Carney. Carney may have a new name and a new voice, but they actually have the exact same design as Lefty from FNAF 6. This is further backed up in the main hub. When you look at the model for Lefty and Carney, they are doing the exact same same pose, and you can see more clearly that they're the same model. So what do all these Fall Fest minigames mean? Well, we learned through one collectible in Help Wanted 2 that there wasn't just a Fall Fest of 83, there was a Fall Fest of 1970. This Fall Fest predates everything we've learned about in this franchise. If you remember, Steel Wool once said that they were interested in making a game about the origins of Fazbear Entertainment. I have no clue if we'll ever be able to do this, but getting back to kind of like the origin of like Fazbear Entertainment. Same here. 
I'd like to head I'd like to head further back into the 70s. And at the time, I took that as a Fred Bear's Family Diner game. But now in retrospect, they never said anything about a Fred Bear's game. They talked about the origins of Fazbear Entertainment. And I think the Fall Fest of 1970 is going to be the setting of this new game about the origins of Fazbear Entertainment. And I think this game is going to tell us the origins of Henry's story specifically. Carney is an exact copy of Lefty. And Lefty is one of the only animatronics we know was built by Henry. So I think the Fall Fest was the beginning of Henry's career building animatronics. But we know that something bad must have happened there because every Fall Fest minigame in Help Wanted 2 catches on fire. Who started this fire and why did it happen? I guess we'll have to find out at the Fall Fest one day. Now let's get to the biggest, most mind-blowing part of this video, and I cannot believe I even found this in this game, but here we go. I posted a theory in June of 2023 about how I think the Mimic virus got scanned into the Help Wanted VR game. I told you that I think the Mimic virus originated from the chip we take out of Baby's arm on Night 5 of Sister Location. In my opinion, I still think that this chip is a big loose thread in Sister Location. Since Baby says that she is the chip, There is a passcode that you must enter before you can retrieve me. We then plug it into hand unit, Put the card into your handheld device and I can continue to speak to you. And then we never hear about it again. But honestly, six months later, I started to doubt that theory more and more. The idea that this major loose thread involving this chip could be how the Mimic virus began is cool, but I was starting to lose hope with that theory. Until Help Wanted 2 came out. Throughout all of the recent FNAF games, the Mimic virus has taken the form of Helpy. For some reason, in Ruin and now Help Wanted 2, the Mimic has used Helpy to communicate with us. Helpy has essentially become the new mascot for the Mimic virus. And in the first aid minigame, we get to see Helpy in his physical form. Helpy is basically being used as a medical dummy so we can practice our first aid on him. And one of the things we have to do is saw open Helpy's head, revealing his brain. Stuck in his brain is a chip that we need to replace. And this chip is the same chip we take out of Baby's arm on night five of Sister Location. The same two green lights and the same five lines in the middle. Helpy, who represents the mimic virus in these games, is being run by this this specific chip. But if you thought that was it, don't worry, there's more. In my theory video back in June, I said that this chip was the one thing that Henry didn't account for when he did the FNAF 6 fire. This chip was able to dodge being burned in FNAF 6. And if you look behind you in the first aid level, you can see a drawing of Helpy escaping a burning building. This theory that I've basically given up on seems to be perfectly laid out in this minigame. Do I think all of this proves my theory right? I don't know. You can interpret this stuff a bunch of different ways, but you can't deny that that chip is the exact same design as the one we see in Sister Location. It's now just attached to a floppy disk looking thing. It could just be a cool callback to Sister Location or even my theory, which would be really cool, but I guess we'll have to find out in a future game. I still have a ton to say about this game, so subscribe for more theories. I hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching.